Today, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser introduced a number of new bills she says are aimed at keeping D.C. safe. Our Delia Gonzalez is outside the 4th District Police Station, right on Georgia Avenue, where the mayor outlined her plan. And Delia, we understand the ACLU has some issues with some of these policy changes, apparently saying that they protect police more than the people. How is the city responding to that? Well, the ACLU no doubt will be paying close attention to the implementation of these proposals should they become law. Well, we asked the deputy mayor of public safety just that about that, that careful balance, striking that balance between keeping our streets safe and making sure our residents don't feel like criminals walking around their own city or targeted in any way. She responded by saying it's a judgment call that police make every day. Last week, surveillance cameras captured a brazen robbery on the wharf where masked men jumped out on unsuspecting diners. Constitutionality, whether it's in policing or any of the proposals we're making, is at the foundation. Now the mayor proposes to make wearing a mask during or with intent to commit a crime unlawful. Deputy Mayor of Public Safety Lindsay Apaya says the bill helps ease business owners' concerns. And people are coming in with ski masks on in July. You can't do anything about that. And the answer was no. That MPD... They are committed to constitutionality. They can only enforce the law as it is. Is that a crime to have a mask walking into a store in July? So in and of itself, Delia, no, it's not a crime to walk into a store with a mask on in July. But based upon an evaluation by MPD, you often see in our lookouts or otherwise four people in ski masks walking up sidewalk or otherwise. This gives MPD the opportunity to even engage. The Addressing Crimes Act Now or Act Now proposal would also make organized theft rings a new crime and a return to drug free zones, allowing police to crack down on the city's known open air drug markets for five days at a time. Whether it's marijuana, or fentanyl or pills or Percocets or whatever, these drugs are fueling violence and they're disrupting um, peaceful communities. The mayor said part of the new legislation is reversing some of the laws the council passed back in 2020. And I think all of us following uh, the murder of George Floyd wanted to make sure that we were doing everything possible uh, to have uh, a safe in um, constitutional police force. I said at the time our police force is not like a lot of police forces around the country. And I think some of the reforms, uh, you know, have made our communities less safe. And while the council members present didn't comment on the past, they committed to working with the mayor moving forward. It has to be all of us united together. I think it deserves an expeditious review. I think it's promising. You know, I'm glad that people are, are talking about it. it has got to be accountability on, I think, both sides. And I really would like to see the community and families getting involved. So I should mention that some of these proposals like that anti mask law and the proposed drug free zones, those are laws that have been on the books, were on the books um, about 10 years ago and through various iterations, especially during the pandemic when we're talking about the masks, they went away. So the mayor says now it's time to revisit what once worked in the past. So let me tell you about the other measures um, in her act now legislation that she's proposing, updating police policies about vehicle pursuits, clarifying exactly what is a chokehold and allowing an officer to review body footage camera before writing their police report. The chief tells me that the U.S. attorney actually advised her on that and says a change to that policy will help them prosecute cases. So. What's the next step? This now goes to the council for a hearing. I reached out to council member Brooke Pinto, who is the chair of the public safety committee. Earlier today, she told me that she is committed to having a hearing this fall. The mayor needs at least seven votes in order for her proposals to become law. Back to you in the studio. Yeah, it looks like she's at least got some council members that are willing to hear her out, and we'll see what happens from here. All right, Delia, thank you.